بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العربين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات البهر وأكرمني بنور الفهر اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء ونعود منك برحمتك يا رحمة الواخر Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and assistance we start a new series on what we call Al-Qawaridu Al-Fiqhiyya Jurisprudential Rules of Maxims and inshallah I hope this would help us better understand Fiqh and better uh, appreciate what uh, our Maraj offer and better, inshallah, apply the rules. You know, sometimes we just have one particular mas'ala, one particular issue in fiqh. For example, whether something is tahir or najis, whether something is obligatory or not, whether something is haram or not. So there are many, many issues that we have that fiqh has to address. There is no voluntary action unless fiqh has something about it. Because everything that we do it freely is in need of guidance. Shall I do it or I shouldn't do it? Everything can be either wajib or mustahab or mubah or makruh or haram. Yeah, we have five types of ruling, we call them al ahkam al khamsa. So there is no action unless it is one of these five. So we have to know. So fiqh covers all our actions. <coughs> In addition to the actions, there are situations that also have rulings. For example, if something is tahir or najis, it's not about my obligation directly. It's not, you cannot say this is wajib or her, but if it is tahir or najis, then it would bring out some duties some responsibilities. <laughs> or zawjiyat, if two people are married or not married, marriage, zawjiya, by itself is not something that I or you should do or should not do. But it brings rulings. <coughs> two people who are married, they have certain responsibilities towards each other. And if they are not married, for example, they cannot uh, look at each other, for example, you know, as married couple, and so on and so forth. Or, for example, melkiya, ownership. Melkiya is something which is not directly about wajib and haram, but it brings out some ahkam. Inshallah. You will learn these things, inshallah, more in future. These are called al-ahkam al in contrast to al-ahkam al Those five, wujub, hurma, istihbab, karaha, wujub, istihbab, ibaha, karaha, and hurma, those five are ahkam al They are obligational. But zawjiyya, tahara, milkiyya, these are ahkam al so, there is nothing about our life unless fiqh has some guidance about it. 
But how does a faqih come to identify the guidance that we need for these issues? Sometimes the faqih has to go to the sources, whether it's Quran or Sunnah or Ijma or Aqil, and then with the help of Usul al fiqh principles of jurisprudence, he would identify our responsibility. For example, there is a hadith that says you must do, for example, Salat al Jumu'ah. Or you must not do Salat al Jumu'ah. Anyway, depending on. Uh, the condition of Ghayba or Adam al Faqih has to establish authenticity of this hadith. Faqih has to establish what is the dalala of this hadith, has to establish whether there are conflicting hadith or not. He has to consider many, many things. Sometimes it may take Faqih tens of hours just for one mas'ala to be able to have a comprehensive examination. Part of what a faqih does is related to that particular mas'ala. The hadith or the ayah or the ijma or the ruling of aql about that mas'ala. Part of it is general. It's general. For example, can we accept khabar wahid? What does it mean? If a just person narrates something from Imam, can we accept? Or if a just person narrates from a just person from Imam, or it can be 10, 20 people in between, if there is one person only, not two people, not tawatu, which means many, many people. Just khabar wahid means not enough to make us certain, but it's a reliable person. Is it reliable for us, this hadith or not? So this is something that we have to establish as a general rule. If we establish this, it helps us in many places. If, or if you don't accept, it changes our view in many places. These are the things that we have to learn in usul al-fiqh. Or for example, is zahir al-kitab hujja or not? When we look at the Quran, you know, in the Quran there are about 500 verses which relate to fiqh. These are called ayatul ahkam. So about one twelfth of the Quran is about fiqh. One twelfth. Okay? So, most of them are not nas, they are zahir, means they are not 100% clear in the sense that they have only one possible interpretation, one possible way of understanding. It is zahir. Zahir means they have a meaning which normally people understand, but there is a little possibility that they may mean something else. Okay? For example, when we say do, or in Arabic when we use command, if there is no other evidence, it means wujub, obligation. But sometimes it can mean istihbab. For example, ightasil. Ightasil, if it is in hadith, ightasil. Or in Quran, faqsilu. This is Sikhatul Amr. Is Sikhatul Amr always meaning wujub? No. But it is zahirun fil wujub, means that its most common usage is for obligation. But sometimes it can be for istihbar, sometimes even can be for ibaha. There are uh, sometimes, you know, that, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, to people, uh, uh, that in the month of Ramadan, uh, if 
there is a married couple, you know, initially there was a time that they couldn't have marital relation even during the night. Then this was abrogated. Allah says, al ba Does it mean that it becomes wajib now? It was haram, now it has become wajib to have marital relations in the months of Ramadan? No. This is just to abrogate hurma. Sometimes amr, aqib al hadr means just permission. Like for example, doctor tells you not to eat this food because you are ill. Next time he says eat. It doesn't mean that you must eat. It means that that ban is over. In any case, there are things that can have one apparent meaning, but they can be also sometimes used for other meanings. Is this zahir hujjah or not? So this is what we establish in usul al-fiqh. So, faqih sometimes has general rules that he needs to use them so that then it comes to the a specific reason, evidence for that particular issue. So Faqih operates on two levels. One is to establish those general guidelines and second is to now apply them to this particular case. Okay? We have something in between. Between those general rules that we learn in Usul al-Fiqh and those things that are about a particular mas'ala. And these are called al-qawa'idul fiqhiyya. These are jurisprudential rules or maxims that they are general, but not as general as qawa'id usuli, the rules of usul al-fiqh. You can use them for different mas'ala. You can use them in different even sections of fiqh. And a very important difference is that this qawa'id fiqhiyya can also be used by muqallid. <coughs> qawa'id usuli can only be used by mujtahid. But qawa'id fiqhiyya can be used also by muqallid. Inshallah we will say. For example, the first rule that we are going to study is Qa'idat al-Tahara. Qa'idat al-Tahara can be used by Mujtahid, can be used by Mughallid. Or Qa'idat al-Faraq, Qa'idat al-Tajawuz, Qa'idat al-Asalat al-Sihha, Qa'idat al-Suq al-Muslimin. So these are the things that Mughallidin also can use when they are in doubt about their duty. So what we thought was Alhamdulillah, you are familiar with Ahkam. Now, if we can have a course on Qawaid Fiqhiyya, so that it would strengthen your understanding of Fiqh. If, inshallah, we have Tawfiq in future, then we can have also Usul al-Fiqh. But I thought maybe now this is more, uh, you know, understandable and more, you know, uh, beneficial for the time being. Let's I start with Qa'idat al-Tahara and I am sure you are already somehow familiar with this. We are inshallah going to have at least one Qa'ida in every session. So at least we will inshallah study 10 Qa'ida but maybe if we have to we can do inshallah more. Qa'idat al-Tahara, the rule of purity. Of course, Tahara means ritual purity. Is very famous among our ulama. And there seems to be no disagreement in principle. Some details, inshallah, we will discuss that might be different, for example, whether it can be applied to Shukhi, Hukmiya or not. Inshallah, we will talk about it. But in general, there is no uh, disagreement about this rule and all our ulama accept this. What is this rule? This rule says that everything 
that you don't know it's Tahir or not Tahir, it's Tahir or Najis. You can assume that it is Tahir unless it is proved to be Najis. كل شيء لك طاهر حتى تعلم أنه نجس. So if there is water here, I don't know this water is طاهر or نجس. I can assume it is طاهر. Even if I don't know the previous condition, I can assume it is طاهر. But if you knew that it was نجس, that's different. You cannot say, Inshallah, it is now طاهر. If you knew it was Najas, you have to assume that it is the same. It's called it Estesab. But that is about Usul of that. But right now, as Qawaid al we have Qawaid al Tahar. Is this, for example, there is blood, but is this blood of a human being or, for example, something which is like, you know, a sheep, a goat, a cow, which is nudges, or is blood of fish, or a mosquito. So you don't know. You say, Inshallah, it's Tahir. Tahir. Because you don't know it is from nudges type of blood. So anything that you don't know, not you don't know because you have not learned Mas'ala, for example, you know it is sharab, but then you say, I don't know sharab is najis or not. Or it, I know it is blood of human being. I don't know. No. It's not that you don't know mas'ala. You know mas'ala, but you don't know the condition. Or for faqih, if after investigation of the references, finds no evidence to say something is najis, Fari also can use it to say, we assume it is Tahir. But this would not be for us. For us would be in shabahat e in instances. Inshallah, we will talk about this. There are some hadith that ulama refer to, and these hadith, some of them are general, some of them are about particular cases. The first hadith, which is very famous and it is general, is Muvathakatu Ammar. This a hadith which is Muvathaka. In Al Muddiraya, you know, we study different types of hadith. One is Muvathaka, means the person or one of at least people is not Adil Imami, but it's reliable. It's a non-imami who is also verified. So we can use that. In any case, in this hadith, which is from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, oh. Imam said, Kullu shay'in nadifun hatta ta'lam annahu qadr. This is in Vasa'il al-Shia. Everything is clean, is tahir, Hatta ta'lam, till you know that it is not clean, it's unclean, qadr. Fa'idha alam alimta faqad qadura. When you know that it is najis, it is najis. So as long as you don't know, it is clean. Wama lam ta'lam. If you don't know it is not just, there is no problem, there is no responsibility for you. So you don't need to do ihtiyat, you don't need to assume it is not just. Then another hadith is from Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And this is about a particular case, about... Uh, Urine. Ma ubali a bowlun asabani au ma un idha lam a'lam. If I don't know whether this is water, for example, you have gone to washroom, you come out, you see your dress is wet. 
You don't know. So you don't need to wash and say, maybe it was najis, maybe it was urine, no, maybe it was water. Amirul Mu'minin, according to this hadith, says, Ma obali, I don't care whether it was urine or water. Ma lam a'lam, if I don't know. So, because they didn't want us to have difficult life, to become waswasi, you know, keep all the time washing and then feeling that still we are najis. Okay? So, if you don't know, you assume it is water. Another case is about a person who says سَأَلْتُهُ عَنِ الْفَأْرَةِ وَالْدَّجَاجَةِ وَالْحَمَامِ وَأَشْبَاهَهَا تَتَعُ الْعَذَرَةِ ثُمَّ تَتَعُ الثَّوْ Sometimes an animal, like a rat or a chicken or pigeon, maybe they put their feet on something nudges. Then they put the same feet on our dress. So it was on a najis, then they put on our dress. And yuhusan. Don't even need to wash this dress. Imam says, In kanas tabana min atharihi. In kanas tabana min atharihi shayun. If after this animal puts the feet, you see something on the dress, فَقْسَلُ You have to wash it. Because now you cannot say, uh, I don't know. وَإِلَّا But if you don't see anything, فَلَا There is no problem. Maybe it was removed by the time that that animal put its feet on the dress. You are not sure that it has made your dress matches. Another hadith. This hadith is a very uh, beneficial also for, maybe it happens sometimes. Ammar ibn Musa as-Sabati, he says, I asked Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and rajulin yajidu fi ina'ihi fa'ra. A person, you know, in the past, they didn't have pipelines, you know, for water. So they had sometimes a container which was uh, maybe a big, you know, pot or something. They used to have it for their drinking, for making wuzu, for using for, you know, bath or whatever. So he says, a person finds in his container a mouse. وَقَدْ تَوَذَّعَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْإِنَا مِرَارًا And he has made wuzu from this. Or he has used this water, so it is ma'iqalil, and dead mouth is there, so it's najis, but he had already made it for wuzu, for khus, or qasala thiyabahu, he has washed his dress with this. And the mouse is now spoiled. It's not, you know, just something which is just has died so the chance of this being there for some time and he didn't know and just for example now he has found it is a lot because the mouse is now spoiled this damage imam Ali salam said according to his hadith in kana ra'aha fil ina if he had seen it before, before making wuzu or, you know, os or washing, he had seen, but he had forgotten. He has to wash again his dress. He has to wash everything that that water has touched. He has to repeat his wuzu. He has to repeat his salat. But But 
if he has seen this mouse after he has done all those things. And there is a possibility that maybe it has just been put into this. Even if it is spoiled, maybe someone put it in this, dropped it in this. You are not 100% sure that it was inside this water when you were using this. So, in kana innama ra'aha ba'dama faragha min dhalik. If after he completed those actions, he just saw it. So, what happens? Fala yamussa min dhalik al ma shay'a. Now he cannot touch this water. But laysa alayhi shay'un. He doesn't need to repeat his wuzu. He doesn't need to wash this dress again. لأنه لا يعلم متى سقطت فيه because he doesn't know when this mouth was put there. لعله أن يكون إنما سقطت فيه تلك الساعة التي رأى maybe had it had just been thrown into it or dropped into it. So this is not about all cases. It's about water and a dead. Mouse, but from this particular hadith, we can get the idea. The first hadith, Mubassaqiyya Ammar, was general. But these are hadith about particular cases, but having them supports what we can understand from the first hadith as a general rule. In addition to this hadith, also there is istishab. Of course, if we have hadith, we don't need to do istisab. But if someone has doubt about this hadith, then we have also istisab. And that is, we say, this was not known to be najis. There was no ruling of najasa fixed to this. And we assume it is still the same. So you cannot say this liquid or this water was not just before, and we assume that it is the same. So, based on these hadith and istisha, al-fuqaha throughout the centuries have accepted this as a general rule, that whenever you don't know something is not just, you can assume it is Tahir. There are three types of cases. Some of them are very easy, some of them, or maybe one of them, it needs more discussion. Sometimes you don't know whether it is Najas or not because you don't know if Najasa has reached it or not. Okay? It's Tahir, but you say, maybe when I went to the washroom, it became Najas. Maybe when I went to the, I don't know, um, butchery, maybe it became Najas. So, you don't know whether Najas has touched it or not. This is very straightforward, that you don't need to assume it is Najas. Sometimes, it's more complicated. You see that there is blood, for example, but you don't know what type of blood is this. In the first scenario, you don't know even if there is anything attached to it. Here, you know there is something, but you don't know it is Najas type. There is a liquid. But we don't know it's Najis. There is maybe blood of human being, maybe blood of fish, maybe blood of mosquito. It's not blood of something which has, uh, you know, the blood circulation. This is again acceptable and we can apply the rule of Tahara. The third type 
is what I told you, it's only for faqih. And that is when there is something that we don't know Islamic ruling about it. For example, maybe faqih has doubt whether wine is najis or not. Suppose, if faqih has doubt that wine is haram, but is it najis or not? Because there are two issues. Hurma is hukm taklifi, means you cannot drink it. But nijasa is hukm vadhi. So if a faqih says that to the best of my understanding, after research, investigation, I could not establish that this is najas. I know it is haram, but I don't know it's najas. If supposedly this happens, then here the faqih, according to some ulama, can apply qa'idatul tahara. And some say, no, faqih cannot apply. Inshallah, we will talk about it later. So this is more complicated when you don't know the ruling of Islam about this case. In the first two times, your doubt is not because you don't know the ruling. Your doubt is because you don't know what has happened. It's a matter of factual knowledge about what has happened. Has not just touched it or not? Or is this blood, blood of uh, human being or blood of fish, for example? So your doubt was not about something in Islamic Sharia. Your doubt was about something external, something about factual, you know, uh, things. You understand the difference? The third is, no, you don't have any doubt about outside world. Your doubt is about what Islam says about this. So there are three types of doubts that we can have about Tahara and Nijasa. Our scholars, when it comes to this last type, <coughs> which is Shobhiyya Hukmiyya, means your doubt is about the ruling, have two opinions. In Al Hada, I don't know if you are familiar, we have a very uh, well known complete series on fiqh called Al Hada al Nadra. This is by Sheikh Yusuf al Bahrani. But he has some tendency towards Akhbarism. So he's a respected faqih, but he has tendency towards Akhbari. You know, he's not very much usul. Anyway, in his book, he mentions the idea of Mullah Amina Astarabadi, who was also Akhbari. And their idea is that he says, we, this is a, the text that, you know, he says, he says that we cannot apply Qa'idatul Tahara in the third type, in Shubahat Hukmiya. He says Qa'idat al-Tahara is not applicable when you don't know the ruling in fiqh. In other words, faqih cannot use it for giving fatwa. This is his idea. But some of ulama, or most of ulama, like Ayatollah Khoui, Rahmatullah Alai, Sahib al Urwe, they say no. This is included in the hadith that we have received when Imam alayhi salam says in Mubassaqiyya Ammar everything is Tahir unless you know it is Najis so it includes also this type of Shubaha these types of you know doubts so ulama are divided but most of ulama say even in Shubaha it can be but this doesn't of course apply to us this is for Fuqaha Another question is, can we establish by this قاعدة, that something 
is really Tahir because we don't know it is Najis or not. In order to explain this, I am sorry that I have to introduce one more terminology to you. Our ulama say ahkam are two types. Al ahkam al waqiyah, al ahkam al zahiriyah. Okay? Al ahkam al waqiyah are those that, in knowledge of Allah, they apply to the things. They are real rulings. Okay? This is hukm waqi. In Allah's knowledge, this is, for example, Tahir, or this is Najis, or this is Wajib, or this is not Wajib. But sometimes we are not able to establish what is the real ruling, and we have to act. So we have some guidelines for such cases that you don't know what is the real ruling, but you know what you are supposed to do. For example, when I say to you, if you had the wuzu at 10 o'clock and at 12 o'clock you have doubt whether my wuzu is broken or not, is now invalid or not. We do a stasal, you can assume that your wuzu is there. Can you say you have wuzu? You cannot say I have wuzu, but you can say I practically assume I have wuzu. This is hukm zahiri It doesn't give you guarantee that you have wuzu. Maybe you don't have wuzu. But it's okay. Allah would not, you know, question you why you didn't make another wuzu. Because you had previously knowledge about wuzu. And you can continue till you are sure that your wuzu is broken. The same is with qa'idat al-tahara. Most of ulama, apart from, again, Sahib al Most of ulama, 90% or 99% of ulama say Qa'idat al Ta'ara does not give you hukm waqi'i. We say you don't know it is Tahir or Nadis, you assume it is Tahir. But maybe in reality, this is Najis. Okay? But as long as you don't know, it's okay. You understand? But the opposite view, which is very rare, says if you don't know it is Najis, it is not Najis. When you don't know it is Najis, it is not Najis. But we say no, sorry. Tahara and Najasa belong to the things and our knowledge is not part of it. So if I don't know or know, it doesn't change. Either it is Tahara or Najis in reality. Whether I know or not is not going to change the real situation. But the thing is that when I am not aware that this is Najis, I am forgiven. I can assume it is Tahir. It's not going to make it Tahir. Therefore, if you want to be very precocious, you may do Ihtiyat. Okay? But you are not going to be punished if you don't do ihtiyat. And if this ihtiyat is going to repeat and make your life difficult, even you have no right to do ihtiyat, because ihtiyat is good as long as it does not become a kind of uh, you know, habit that you feel that you must wash, you must wash, you must wash. It makes your life you know, miserable. So, the summary is that one of the rules that Fuqaha have accepted and have operated and have also given us instruction that we can use it, but of course we use it only in instances, not in ahkam, is qa'idat al-tahara. When you don't know something is najis or tahir, or something which was Tahir is touched by Najis or not, you can assume that it is still Tahir unless it is proved. So this is very helpful rule and 
by knowing this rule, you can understand many masail in Rasad, in Kitab al-Tahara, in Kitab al-Salat, even in uh, about you know eating and drinking. Many masail you can understand, but I repeat, this does not give you facility or permission not to ask about mas'ala. You cannot say, I don't want to know anything, then I say, I don't know if it is Tahir or Najas, so I assume it is Tahir. No. It's for people who don't know the factual information. Okay? Not that they don't know the mas'ala. If you don't know mas'ala, you have to learn the mas'ala. But if you know mas'ala, but you don't know what type of Liquid is this. What has happened? I was not here. Did someone put najasa in my water or not? You know, someone put najasa in my dress or not? These type of things, doubts, we can uh, ignore. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam.